What's the word, y'all? What players are under the most pressure to win the championship? That is a question that was asked on ESPN a few days ago. And Stephen A. Smith gave his list of the top five players under the most pressure. And I saw a screenshot of it on Twitter. And I hated the list. I'll be honest with you. I thought the list was bad. But I did my due diligence. I didn't, I didn't want to just look at a screenshot and think that this was all that was to be said. I've been taken out of context before, whether it be on this show, someone taking a screenshot, or somebody taking a 5 to 10 second clip of my podcast and saying they was bugging without giving a full context of the conversation. So I went back, I watched the conversation between Stephen A. Smith, Mad Dog, I, who else was ended up, JJ ended up in there, and I watched the entire segment. And I'm still going to say, I hate this list. <laughs> I'm, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I gave it to him, and I still hate the list. Before we get into the list, I want to tell you about my newsletter, the Enjoy Basketball newsletter. It drops Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Whether you're a casual NBA fan or a diehard NBA fan, there's always content for somebody. You sign up for free, and you get an email early in the morning before you commute, before you ride to school or whatever, and it's different takes and different opinions about the NBA, but all surrounding the idea of enjoying the game. So join the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have already subscribed to the newsletter and, and go ahead and subscribe. We was just in Utah, and, and some of my favorite interactions was Kenny I subscribe to the newsletter and I read it every drop it made me feel great so join the crew now the reason I'm promoing that now is is because I am again team enjoy basketball but I think conversations like this can be healthy where, where me and my guys have had similar conversations for example the year that Giannis went on to win his first championship before that season the preseason we had this exact conversation what players and or teams are under the most pressure to be successful and success in this conversation is winning a championship and if I remember correctly I thought that that season Giannis was under a ton of pressure and and it wasn't like oh it's championship or bust because at that time he's still relatively young I think he was only 20 20 what I don't even remember how old Giannis was a couple years ago he was still young entering his prime but he had won a couple NBA MVPs he won defensive player of the years but he hadn't got to the NBA finals and I thought this season where with what the what their roster looked like this was their best chance and they went on to to do it and now it's not really conversations about whether or not Giannis can do it because you think about the most pressure to win a championship a lot of it is really just like if this person doesn't win this ring or they end up flaming out in the playoffs what is the narrative what is the conversation gonna be revolving it sticking with Giannis if Giannis would have went on and ended up losing in the second round in the conference finals or or losing in the finals people would still believe that whether his brand of basketball or whatever just doesn't equate to winning at the highest level with one singular championship all of the negative narratives or whatever go away at least for a few seasons before they, they they come back again. So Stephen A. Smith gave his list. And again, I went on, I watched it, I listened to it. And I'm not going to show clips of it because I don't want ESPN to take my video down. I don't know how they're going to think about it. I'll give you his rationalization to his top five players under the most pressure to win a championship. At five, he had Kawhi Leonard. Personally, I hate it. Personally, I hate it. Kawhi Leonard is already a two-time NBA champion. He is all already a two-time Finals MVP. And just recently, with his run with the Toronto Raptors that he ended up winning, that was one of the most legendary individual playoff runs we've seen in the last 10 to 15 seasons. I understand that the Clippers have pressure because this is year four of them being together. But Kawhi Leonard individually, I can I can see the idea behind it, but I can't get behind him being top five. Now, if you want to say he was number eight, number nine, then maybe. But top five, definitely not when I start to tell you who I think should actually be on this list. Kawhi Leonard shouldn't be here. But the Clippers, sure. They traded a lot to get Paul George on this team. They got one conference finals appearance, and, and they have the low management. Sometimes they plan, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're injured. I understand the idea of the Clippers having a lot of pressure as a team, but Kawhi Leonard individually, whether he wins a championship this season or never again, he, he's still going to be seen as the guy that had a legendary run with the Toronto, Toronto Raptors and a guy that went on to win a championship with the Spurs and was the finals MVP. That does not change. Number four on his list is Nikola Jokic. His idea is Nikola Jokic might get crowned as a three-time NBA MVP this season, which is something that we haven't seen since Larry Bird. And his idea is if you're going to get three in a row, you got to get some type of championship. And Jamal Murray's playing better. Michael Porter Jr. is back. These are all his words. That part, I don't mind whatsoever. Nikola Jokic is under pressure. Let's be real. Nikola Jokic is under pressure. I've seen him have really good playoff series, but I've also seen a series where, again, he was going against the, the Golden State Warriors, who eventually went on to win a championship, where they put this man in a pick and roll and made him make these decisions as often as I've ever seen anybody, where, where when they got eliminated from the final some some podcasts and some people that i really respect in the nba world or have a conversations whether or not he can be the the defensive center 
on a team that eventually goes on to win a championship. And that's after he's won two MVPs and as him being one of the best offensive players we've ever seen in the game of basketball. But can his form of defense, his, his limitations prevent his team from winning a ring? And if he wins number three this season, undoubtedly there is going to be pressure for them to do it, especially considering they're the one seed now, and this is the best they've looked in the Nikola Jokic MVP caliber era. But So I don't hate that with Stephen A, but I will say I hate number three on your list, which is Jason Tatum. His idea was last year in the finals, Jason Tatum put up a stinker. I can't, I can't deny that. He did not have a good final series. But Jason Tatum is, what, 24 years old. He has been to, what, four conference finals. He's an all-NBA, all-NBA caliber dude. If he doesn't win a championship this season, I don't think people are going to start saying that he can't end up doing it. He is he is so extremely young and it's so extremely talented that I don't think there is a ton of pressure for Jason Tatum to win a championship this season. You might say that the, the Celtics are under pressure because, again, they have been to the conference finals this many times. They have one, con or one finals appearance in this current era and they haven't been able to put it together completely. But I look at their team and I look at their core of being Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and say if they don't win it this season I feel pretty confident saying the next season they're going to have another chance and the season after that now the NBA isn't as simple as that you never know who's going to want out you never know when an injury is going to hit but I don't think Jason Tatum is under a ton of pressure again I don't think he's the third highest when it comes to pressure number two on the list is James Harden I can I can agree with this portion um James Harden again he, you know unfortunately for James you had the season where Chris Paul went out with an injury uh, and, and also unfortunate for James, his best time with the Houston Rockets also happened to be when an all-time team was taking form and an all-time team was dominating the game of basketball. That Golden State Warrior team that had Kevin Durant is an all-time team. It, it, no other team, when it comes to the orchestration of it, is better. I understand there are teams that have better records, whether it be the Bulls, whether it be the Golden State Warriors of the year before that. But when it comes to just pure talent of basketball, there's no other team that was constructed to be better. And unfortunately for James Harden, he had to go against that team as often as anybody. But one thing I can say for James and those, those versions of those teams, they were the closest to do it. They, they were the closest to do it, but they didn't do it. And the fact that they didn't do it is still a monkey on James Harden's back. The fact that we haven't seen James Harden back against the wall in the playoff series really step it up and have those MVP top player of all time performances is one of the reasons why the pressure is on for him. You know, he's taken a step back. He's a number two. He's one of the he's still one of the best players in basketball. I think he should have been an all-star again this season. But he's playing alongside Joel Embiid. And this team is built to go on a championship run. It's happened. This is, this is the time. Now they have some continuity being the second year that they've been in the playoffs together. And there is a ton of pressure, not just on James, but also on Joel Embiid to make this Philly thing work. And number one on the list is Chris Paul. Cannot deny it either. Similar things that I've said with James Harden. Again, the, the Chris Paul injury that one season prevented, I think, prevented James from getting his first piece of jewelry and prevented uh, Chris Paul from getting that same jewelry. You know what I'm saying? That 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 sucks. But we all have seen Chris Paul over the last couple seasons. He will have a really good run where he is an all-star. Except for this season, he's an all-star. Setting back the, the, the clocks a little bit and looking great. And he'll have some playoff series and games where he's amazing, like shooting perfect from the field last season in that one game against the Pelicans, I think it was. But then his body breaks down on him every single year. Every single year. And now he has Devin Booker and he has Kevin Durant on his roster. Now, again, they got 20-something, 20 20-ish games to make it happen. Because it's not like they, they play again tonight. That man KD not suiting up to next week. So they're going to have 20 or less games to make the it all work. So there is something to say there. But he is under an immense amount of pressure because the opportunity to win a championship is no better than it is right now with Book and Kevin Durant. Especially when you look at this year, he's not nearly as effective as he was last year, the year before that. So we don't know how many years left in the tank we have of Chris Paul being really solid. So this is big, especially when you consider, when you look at the rumors of the Suns thinking about the era post Chris Paul, and you see that they're willing or thinking about Fred Van Vliet as a potential option. Uh, if they're bringing in Freddie, that means that maybe Christopher is going some other place or whatever. So there is a ton of pressure on Chris Paul. And I hope for the sake of Chris Paul, because he's my favorite of all time, that it happens. So part, part of this list, the Chris, the James, the Jokic, I understand the rationalization behind it. Joel Embiid has to be on this list. And maybe we compare Joel Embiid to James Harden together because 
they are teammates. I think I did a poor job of explaining why Joel Embiid is being added to the list for me personally. I, I, I just talked about it in passing. But in reality, Joel Embiid is not just on the list, but he's high on the list for me personally. Joel Embiid is undoubtedly one of the best players of basketball. You cannot dispute that. The league has determined in the last couple seasons that he was a runner-up to MVP or third in MVP. He's been an all-star of these years. I mean, this guy is absolutely ridiculous at the game of basketball but i just went back and i look at the ringers top 100 players of basketball and i was just thinking to myself out of the top 10 players in hoops according to the ringer only according to the ringer i know it's not the perfect place but i'm just using it as a reference according to the ringers top 100 players of basketball if you look at their top 10 there's only two players in their top 10 currently that has never sniffed a conference finals the first one is shay Gilles alexander he's 17 years old i don't know he's, he's super young and then the other is girl and beat Every single other player, top 10 player in basketball, according to the Ringers list, has at least got to the conference finals, and Joel Embiid has not had that situation just yet. Some of that is because he's missed with injury, or I think he had the bubble guts one series, or uh, his teammates have, have missed some, uh, some games because of injuries, or because of Kawhi Leonard hit the shot. So, like, th there are a lot of factors that have prevented Joel Embiid from making the conference finals and ultimately going to the NBA finals, but it still stands. He has not been there. And, and you can make an argument that this might be the best team that has been built around him specifically to make this deep run. So the time has to be now, JoJo. You feel me? That's, that's all. Outside of that, it's kind of hard to put together a list of, of players that are under the most amount of pressure. Um, especially when you're thinking about the rings, because I, if we were looking at the landscape of the NBA, there's an okay amount of teams that could actually win it, but there's not a ton. Right, so I can't look at a team like the Miami Heat and say Jimmy Butler or Bam Adebayo are under immense amount of pressure to win a championship. I, I don't think that's that's the case, but I do think they are under pressure to be successful because this version of their team might have run its course. Like like there are pressures for teams as far as them having to look themselves in the mirror and say, okay, this era might be over. Like I think there's pressure on the Memphis Grizzlies, but it's not championship pressure. It's like back up the talk pressure. You know, these these are different things, but pressure is pressure. These these TV shows, um, whether it be ESPN or, or the other networks, um, they are under a lot. Of, <laughs> they're under the most pressure to win. A t no, they are under a lot of pressure um, because they don't have the luxury that I do. We're like, if there's nothing to talk about, I just won't upload a video. Stephen A. Smith has to be on TV all day, every day. So it's like because of that. Uh, a lot of his segments or their segments are just going to be bad. But also think about players like KD. KD's under pressure, but it's not like championship or bust pressure. Because I do think that since Kevin Durant is under contract for these X amount of years and Devin Booker is on the team, those two as a core alone should be good enough for them to be in contention for the foreseeable future. So if they end up getting eliminated in the conference final second round of the season, I can't say, oh, no, everything, everything's coming down because they will be back next season to, to potentially get it done. But then again, he's Kevin Durant, you know? I see the idea of pressure being around him, but he's Kevin Durant. I don't know. You let me know what you think about uh, Stephen A. Smith's list, um, and and you let me know what you think about my additives being Joel Embiid to the list, Kevin kind of, I guess. Does Westbrook have pressure? I, again, I think the Clippers in general. Instead of using Kawhi, I probably would have used Paul George as Stephen A. Smith's things um, just because Kawhi has proven these things and Paul George has not. I think the Clippers in general. Um, anyway, what, whatever. 